Hey folks, this is Shane from Performance EV. Today we're finally going to take a look at that Nissan Leaf gearbox. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. For those of you new to the channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. Over the past few weeks, um, I've put up uh, some videos looking at how I was trying to f you know, figure out how to fit the motor and gearbox from the Leaf into the Porsche. Now that I've taken out the, the Porsche engine, I've actually got access to the, the engine bay and where the gearbox, the Porsche gearbox went. Uh, the response to those videos has been absolutely fantastic and I've actually received well, what is for my channel, a lot of comments with people offering um, some great ideas and some really valuable insights. Um, you know, they've, they've kind of fed what, what I've been doing over the, the last few weeks um, from, from that first video onwards. One thing that was raised after the last video um, where I was looking at trying to install the engine and gearbox at a at an angle, not quite 100% upside down, but you know, not not far off it, um, was about whether whether that would actually cause any issues with things like basically with lubrication inside the gearbox, so oil pressure, oil channels, and that sort of thing. I've had a look online. I've managed to find some pictures of the inside of the gearbox, but they're not all that in depth. So I figured it was as good excuse as any to actually take the gearbox apart and have a look inside and see how complex the kind of the internals are and whether installing it upside down is likely to cause any issues with the um, the lubrication of the the gears internally or if it's actually you know a, a re very simple setup and you know the orientation doesn't matter to it so why don't you join me as we start to take a more in-depth look at the Nissan Leaf gearbox. Here we have the Nissan Leaf gearbox. It's essentially a, it's a differential. It's a single speed reduction gear. It takes the drive from the motor, um, takes it down through a, what would be considered a relatively large ratio and sends it to the wheels. So let's take a deeper look at it. So to get a better view, Let's look at the point at which the motor actually connects to the gearbox. So this is the the point here where we bolt the the gearbox to the motor and the spline shaft from the motor basically goes into the gearbox here and spins this part of the gearbox at the speed of the motor. Then the internal workings of the gearbox take over which we'll start looking at shortly and what comes out is sent through these points here where the spine shafts from the uh, drive shafts fit in to either side. So let's take a look inside. So there we have it, the inside of the Nissan Leaf gearbox. So what we're looking at here is 
well, it's nothing too complex or complicated. It is just a differential. So we've got this shaft here that takes the drive from the motor. Um, when that spins, it then rotates this intermediate shaft, which ultimately rotates the um, piece, the cog here that drives the uh, wheels. So taking, as you can see, the input shaft here spins much faster than the output shaft. And that's where we're getting the kind of almost eight to one reduction in speed from the, the actual motor itself through to the wheels. And then you've just got your bearings here, which um, turn or allow the, the things to, to turn free, we, freely. Um, in terms of oil channels, there's nothing huge. There is a little kind of, I guess, reservoir here at what would be the top, just probably to control the flow of oil back in. But I think essentially this just sits in a big bath of oil. So I don't want to take the individual components out because it can be a little bit finicky. It's not the end of the world, but it can be a little bit finicky trying to get them to mesh back together um, when you put these sorts of things back together. Um, one interesting thing is you've also got the control for the, um, I guess, parking brake here. So that's these components right here. And essentially there's an extra cog on the dry, on the input shaft, um, which just has kind of very square teeth. And then there's this almost, um, hammer like piece which basically when pushed down stops the turning of the input shaft and therefore nothing else can turn um, and basically there's this shaft here which pushes that down and that's attached to um, the electronically operated unit that you've probably seen the black unit sitting on the outside of the um, of the unit So there's nothing here that causes me major, major concern. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, if it does make sense to run upside down, I'm just going to run it upside down and see what happens. Um, probably the hardest part of putting this all back together is going to be getting this uh, parking brake piece to, to fit back together because I have to slot it in on the top before dropping it back down. Um, and then I'm going to need to basically try and get all this gasket material off and put new sealant there um, to to seal seal it so that no oil comes out. So I think that was a worthwhile um, act activity just to kind of get a look inside here, make sure there was nothing too complex going on, and also to make sure, to be honest, that it is actually in in decent condition. And there doesn't seem to be any major wear on any of the teeth, be it for the actual drive or for the the parking brake. So I think we're in a, a pretty good place to, to move the project forward. As I said, I'll, I'll take a look and if it needs to sit upside down, I'm probably going to take the gamble and run it upside down. Um, I think as long as there's sufficient oil in the, um, in the unit to, to kind of cover the main components here, um, it, should, it should function fine. So one thing I want to do while I have this bit off is remove the uh, know, mounting tab, whatever this thing is, uh, to just give myself more clearance. It may cause a problem in the future, it may not, but if it's not there, then it won't.
we go, one last thing to get caught up on. So now let's uh, start putting it back together. So I know it took me a little while to get around to looking as in-depth into the, I guess, the mechanical side of things with the motor and gearbox um, when you consider how many videos I did on the electronic side of things. But I'm glad I finally got around to doing this. Uh, it's been really productive to kind of understand what's going on in that gearbox um, and to see exactly what what impact I would have from from looking at it upside down. Um, so this this will help me go forward on the, the next steps of trying to fit the motor and gearbox with a bit more confidence that I that I know what any potential implications might be of whatever orientation I end up putting it in. Um, so I hope this video has been interesting. I hope some of you have found it useful. And if you have, please, you know, like the video, add some more comments if there's anything more you'd like to know about it or anything you'd like to to say. And um, yeah, thanks to all of you who's who've already subscribed. And if you if you haven't subscribed and you like what I'm doing, please please consider it. Um, but till then, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.